Today on Let's Celebrate TV Basic Skills, it's sauce tomato, one of the five mother sauces. Hi everyone, welcome to today's episode of Let's Celebrate TV Basic Skills. I'm your host, Peter Lee. Today, we're continuing our exploration of the five French mother sauces, and today we're doing sauce tomato. Now, what are the mother sauces? First, there's the bechamel, which is a creamy white sauce. Next is espagnol, which is a brown sauce that's darker and thicker than your average gravy. Then there's velouté, which is made with a light stock and delicious. There's sauce tomato, now don't call it marinara. And finally, there's hollandaise, which is an egg-based sauce. Now this sauce tomato is the basis of most tomato sauces that will become other sauces later. That's why it's called a mother sauce. And this is made in the French method. So the first thing we did was I preheated my oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 180 Celsius. Now I have here a nice large oven proof skillet where you can use a pan and I have it over medium heat. We're going to start by adding two tablespoons of butter. We get that melting. Next, we're going to add some salt pork. Now what is salt pork? This is salt pork and you get it in where the hams and things like that are in your meat section. Salt pork is pork that's cured with just salt, whereas bacon has other spices and it's smoked. This is gonna give a richness and some wonderful pork flavor that you won't necessarily taste as pork, but it's that undercurrent of richness. I've got three ounces or about 95 grams. I just cut it up into small pieces called lardons. We're just going to put this in with the butter. The butter is going to help it get started and help the fat start to render. And all that is the flavor. We're just going to let this go for a couple of minutes until it starts to render. Alrighty, this is starting to render. Now you don't need to cook this all the way down until it's crispy, but you'll start to see some coloring on it. And that means it's starting to render. And it will continue to render. This is just getting it started. All right, to this, we're gonna add some more flavors. It's all about building layers of flavor. I have one carrot, all diced up, right in. Next up is one stalk of celery, just diced. Then an onion, medium onion or so, just diced up. Now this combination of carrot, celery, and onion is called a mirepoix, and it is a flavor foundation for a lot of dishes, soups, stews, sauces, you name it. We're just going to let this cook, stirring it once in a while, for five to seven minutes, or until the onions and celery are translucent and the vegetables start to soften. All right, my vegetables are softening. They're looking great. Now we want to give this sauce a little body. So the next ingredient, this is where I want you to hold on, stick with me. We're going to add three tablespoons of flour. Now I know some of you are saying, it's not the way my Nona does it. This is the French tomato sauce. Stick with me. I'm just gonna sprinkle this in. And we're just gonna stir it around, get everything coated in the flour. And we're gonna let this cook for another few minutes. We wanna see the flour just start to get a little golden brown. It's gonna take maybe five minutes. So that's going to cook the, flour, the raw flour taste out. It's going to thicken it. But toasting a little bit is gonna give yet more deep flavor. And that's what we want. All right, I'm starting to see some color in my flour, which is just what we want. Now don't let this go too long because you'll burn it to the bottom of your pan and that will make your sauce bitter. More flavor. I'm gonna add some herbs now. I have a sprig of fresh thyme right in. 
I have a bay leaf. Now I have fresh bay leaves today, but you can use dry. And this is one of those flavors that when it's not there, you miss it. Right in. Garlic, of course. How can we have tomato sauce without garlic? This is just a couple of cloves, roughly crushed up. Right in. A quick little stir. Oh, right away, those herbs and garlic are smelling wonderful. They're getting very fragrant. Now, it's time for the tomatoes. I have two cans, 28 ounces or 794 grams each of crushed tomatoes. And that's very important that you use crushed tomatoes. We're gonna pour this right in. Let's get it all out. Next up is beef stock. I have 16 ounces or 480 mils of beef stock. You can use veal stock if you can get it. You can even use chicken or vegetable stock, but the beef stock is gonna give you, what I keep saying, a richer, deeper flavor. Right in. Lovely. Now this looks really thin right now, and it is. I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of salt and pepper. Not too much salt because of that salt pork in there, but a little bit more because there's a lot of liquid in there now. And some black pepper. And finally, don't get upset. Some of you are going to upset about this. I'm gonna add a pinch of sugar. Just that much. That's not going to make it sweet, but it will help all the tomato flavor come out. And we wanna bring this up to a boil. I'm gonna turn the heat up a little bit. I'm gonna put the cover on for a moment partway, just to help it come up to a boil. Once it starts boiling, we're gonna put this in the oven. And that's the other thing that you might not be used to. I'm sure Nona simmers her sauce, her Sunday gravy on the stove all day. This gets done in the oven. And it's already starting to bubble and boil. So I'm gonna put this in a 350 degree oven for about 90 minutes. I'm gonna keep the lid partially askew like this. That's going to keep it from splattering everywhere. It's also gonna let some of the water evaporate out and intensify those flavors. All right, it's been 90 minutes and I've taken my sauce out of the oven. I've let it cool down and rest for about 10 or 15 minutes. I went ahead and I fished the bay leaf and the thyme sprigs out of it already. So let me show you what this looks like. Isn't that glorious? Wow, that smells so good. The tomato is just roasted and concentrated. Now from here, where would you go? Well, you could force this through a fine mesh sieve to get rid of all of those little bits and bobs that are in there. Or, you know what I'm going to do, and use your immersion blender. And we're just gonna blend this until it's smooth. But be careful, this is still hot and you don't wanna to splatter tomato sauce all over. All right, that's really all you need to do. I love these immersion blenders. I'll leave you a link to one. They're pretty inexpensive. Now, what can this become, this tomato sauce? Well, if you add capers and olives, you can make it a Provencal sauce. You could make it a peppery Basque piperade sauce. Or, if you wanna go really unique, you can go to the country of Senegal and make a Nadambe sauce. Delicious. Or, like many of your Italian nonas, you can just add spices and meats and whatever other flavorings and make it your own Sunday spaghetti sauce, or that some people around here call it the Sunday gravy. Now let's give this a little taste. Mmm. That's very, very good. Intense tomato flavor. And you get the back, background flavors. You get that garlic and the thyme in the background. It's rich from that beef stock and that salt pork in there, giving all that lusciousness. You know what's next. All right, as always, we will see you 
on Tuesdays for regular episodes, Fridays for basic skills or Cocktail Friday, or every other Sunday for our live streams. Now, my kids are coming to dinner later, so I'm gonna turn this into a lasagna. And while I do that, I want you to watch some of these episodes over here. So until next time, everyone, cheers.